So I wanted to do a video on backup and disaster recovery, um, mainly what we use. We use a pr product called StorageCraft Shadow Protect. It's a very good product and I've not had any issues with it. We've been using it for a number of years. Um, before we get started, if you could go ahead and hit the like button if you do find this video useful. Um, so onto Shadow Protect. As I say, we've used it for a number of years. Um, I have done the certification in it. Uh, and I just wanted to go through how to install it um, so you can see it for yourself and see what the benefits of the product are. So if we head over to our website, um, I'm set up on a virtual machine here. I've basically set two virtual machines up, one for a BDR server, which is just running Windows 10, uh, and a separate virtual machine, which is running Windows 10, which we can use to test a backup and make sure that, that works properly. Um, so if we go over to the StorageCraft website, software and updates, Um, and we want Shadow Protect SPX. Download the installer file. Okay, once it's installed, um, you will need to reboot the system because of the way it works with the Windows um, VSS drivers. Um, so go ahead and reboot. So, once it's restarted, um, we can, we're ready to go and configure um, Shadow Protect and get our first backup running. Um, as I mentioned, I've set up a, another virtual machine to backup to. Um, you can you know, back up to free NAS, um, another Windows share. Um, but in this case, the way that I'm going to do it is, say, it's backing up to a, a Windows 10 BDR server. Um, you'll notice, it's, well, it's called Windows 10 BDR, W10 BDR. So when I try to connect to it, it's asking me to um, enter network credentials. Um, now, I'm not going to bother entering them here, and I'd recommend that you don't do it. Um, you know, especially from the servers that you're backing up, because if the um, network drive is mapped, then it leaves you open to um, getting your backups encrypted by ransomware. Um, so you don't need to do it. The machine doesn't need access to it itself. Um, so if we go ahead, cancel that, and let's go into Shadow Protect. So it'll ask you to set um, to connect to the local session because it is protected to stop people getting in there. Um, it's the local machine user. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and put a key in here. Uh, as I did mention, the fact that we've not mapped the network drive, we need to go in and specify a destination. Um, we're using a network share. So, Windows 10 BDR. Um, let's go ahead and set up a share for this.
Here's our drive we've got set up. Let's create a new folder. Pull it back up. Let's go ahead and share the folder. So our backup destination is W10BDR backslash backup. Um, you can specify the credentials to connect, which are the user of the backup server. So we'll put the, domain, the uh, name of the system in, W10BDR, the username, which is the user, and the password, which we've set up. Click verify access. You've successfully connected to the destination. So we've set the destination up. If we go and create a new backup job, um, give it a name. The destination we can select from the destination that we've just specified. Um, a description. Um, specify a password to encrypt the backup. And we don't need to worry about the system reserved volume in this case, we just need the operating system. Um, you can also select you know, data volumes, operating system volumes, or custom if you'd like to specify it separately. Then to schedule, and this is where you specify the backup type. Um, from backup types, we've got uh, continuous, which is basically where it'll do a full backup, uh, and then it'll do uh, incremental backups, um, however often you specify. Um, full backup, again, you can set weekly backups up, uh, monthly backups. You can do mixed type of backups. Um, now the one that we're interested in is continuous. We basically want to do a full system backup um, and then once the full system backups complete um, every day, we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from 5 past 8 in the morning until 5 past 6 at night you can change this you know, as little as every 15 minutes if you want the backups to be done that way. Um, you can specify every hour um, begin immediately or you can schedule it for later if you don't want the backup to run right now. And you can do throttle and limits. Um, if you know the system's just under heavy load you can basically specify it so it doesn't do the it doesn't take over the whole system. You can specify, you know, if you'd like the as soon as the backup started a script to run, you can do this. You can split the, the uh, image files into smaller files if you, you know, you're restricted to the media that you're putting them on. Um, save volume images concurrently. Uh, this will basically, if you're running two separate backup jobs, one on a C drive, for example, and one on a data drive, um, it'll do both the backups at the same time. It puts extra load on the system, so I generally leave this unticked. Uh, immediately run miss backups on restart does exactly what it says um, if a backups missed it will restart it as soon as it can um, use write caching when saving image files and um, this can improve network performance if you do have any issues with slow speeds um, then you can enable this and it will cache the data before it sends it across to the server um, that's pretty much all we need to do to get our first backup running so if we click save you can see our backup's queued straight away. You can see what the backup job is, um, current status of it, and it's currently running and it'll take a snapshot. Like we'll go through and it'll do the full backup. So as you can see, your backup starts immediately. 
you can see how long the initial backup's going to take. Um, it's running particularly slow on this system because I'm backing up from one virtual machine to another virtual machine. Um, that both set up on my machine on the same hard drive, so there is a bit of bottleneck there. So we need to wait for this to go through and then the backup to complete. So, our backup's finished, and you can see it's queued, ready to um, be executed at the next interval specified, which as we can see it'll run on the 13th at 8 or 5, so on tomorrow. Um, one thing to take note of, the password, make sure you save it in a secure place, because if you lose the password, um, you're kind of screwed your backups have gone so you need to make sure this password is saved um, somewhere securely um, write it down stick it in a safe whatever you need to do so um, with that if we need to you know if we're doing something on the system we want to do another backup straight away we can um, Start backup now, start an incremental backup. And it'll go ahead and it'll take the next incremental backup. So it'll only back, back up things that have changed since you last ran the backup. As you can see, the back because it's doing an incremental backup, it's a lot quicker um, on subsequent runs. It would be quicker than this in a production environment. It's because I'm using it on virtual machines. So. We can see our backups down here. The width of the spike shows that that was quite a in-depth backup, whereas you can't really see this one, which is showing um, it's only recently been backed up. So that's backed up, and it's gone to the server which you're using as a dedicated backup server. So if we look in our backup folder, we can see the backups are here. And from our original machine, we still don't have access. Um, and there's no need for the machine to have access. As I say, it will help prevent, you know, if somebody opens a malicious file on the server, the server doesn't have access to the backup share, um, so your backups are, you know, fairly safe. So that's pretty much it as far as um, getting Shadow Protect SPX installed and your first backup running. Um, in the next video, I'll need to go through Image Manager. Um, Image Manager is used to verify that your backups work to consolidate your backups. I'm reading from the website, StorageCraft Image Manager helps you maintain and manage backup files and the storage space used by those files. Based on the policy that you create, Image Manager automatically consolidates incremental backup image files onto daily, weekly and monthly incremental images. 
Um, so we'll go through that on the next video and I'll try to get it done as soon as I can. Thank you for taking the time. If you have made it to the end of the video, please do me a favour, hit the like button. Thank you.